Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. For today's midweek meta deck, we are playing Magic Dad's 71522's Legacy Challenge winning Black Red Reanimator deck. Now, you don't see a lot of Black Red Reanimator deck these days because it's kind of been supplanted by the Blue Black Reanimator decks and, you know, the Rescaminator and even the Blue Black Tempo decks are pretty good against Reanimator as a general rule. So I was curious to see that this managed to take down a challenge. This deck is doing one thing here. We are putting a monster in the graveyard with Entomb, Faithless Looting, Seize Targeting Ourselves, Unmasked Targeting Ourselves, or, you know, just Grief putting itself into the graveyard. And then we're reanimating it with Animate Dead, Shallow Grave, and Reanimate. That's pretty much what our deck does. We've got ourselves some Fast Mana and Lotus Petals and Dark Rituals to power this out on turn one. We also have a single Molten Collapse in the main deck that we can use to interact on a slightly different axis with our opponents. And then we just got our monsters. So we've got two Grizzle Brand, two Atraxa, two Arcan of Cruelty. And that is basically it. Our mana base does have room for a few little splashes here. So... See, we need the red mana to cast our faces looting into the main, but they also flex into casting Megas of the Moon and, you know, more Molten Collapses out of the board. We've got ourselves a Scrubland, which is in there, from what I can make out, just to hard cast an Attractor, which sometimes happens, but I'm not necessarily convinced we won that, but I'm playing the, the list as it came. Then we've got ourselves the Underground Sea, which is going to be used to cast our Show and Tell. Now, obviously, we have Lotus Petals and do a lot of work, too. Got some fetches to pull them out, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, we've got a fair threat in... I say fair, but we got a uh, castable threat with Shulru that we don't have to worry about reanimating. We've got a little bit of removal and fatal push alongside the modern collapses. We've got an Echoing Truth for whatever permits we need to get rid of. Then we've got the show and tell, as I mentioned, so that when our graveyard stuff is under duress, we can just show and tell one of our big ones instead. We've also got a couple of Dowthy Void Walkers as Graveyard Hate that can also pressure and beat down alongside our Shulru. And we've got some Graveyard Hate of our very own in this Fairy Macarp. That's pretty much it on this list. I think it's probably important to note the Shallow Grave. So this returns a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a top creature of your graveyard. And you exile at the beginning of the next end step. So we will play this and put a Grizzle Brand in, draw a bunch of cards off the Grizzle Brand. And it's kind of like a sneak attack from the graveyard, is how to think of it, except like the monster's gone forever. So that's certainly an interesting one. It allows you to play around some graveyard hate as well. So if your opponent goes to like remove something, like let's say you've got three mana, you reanimate your guy, your opponent flashes in uh, an endurance then you shallow grave over the top of it and then you get to do your whole thing so it gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of timings as well and yeah that's the list i'm curious to see how it plays especially in a meta that i think is pretty hostile to this sort of deck but the fact is a lot of people are expecting the rescaminator deck which tends to go a touch slower it's not a turn one reanimate deck it's a turn two turn three reanimate deck whereas this deck is aiming to do its big thing on turn one so maybe we're going to catch some people unawares and that's where the power comes from here all right we're doing a powerful thing let's see if we can do it well enough to win a bunch of rounds remember to like and subscribe and let's get reanimating our opening hand here is going to require us to face the looting and find something we only have six monsters so that's not a lot of hits to be honest i think we need to mulligan this uh yeah pretty good so we can we can keep this so if we go turn one, Badlands, we unmask Pitching, Molten Collapse, then we cast our Ritual, Entomb, Reanimate, win the game. Like a reasonable place for us to be. Hour of Destiny. Okay, so we're on some Eldrazi, so what we're doing should be more powerful than our opponent's things. Although, you know, they can sometimes do the, the turn to I win the game off of Double Flesh Raker. But hopefully we can break that up with our unmask anyway. Just an Eye of Ugin. A friendly Eye of Ugin. Okay, so I'll play a Badlands, then I will... Unmask, Remote Collapse. Devour of Destiny is probably the thing that might be able to get them back into this one if they can remove something we're doing. So I guess we just take the Devourer here. We just go over the top of what our opponent's doing. Dark Ritual time, Entomb time. Which threat is the correct threat here? Is it the Attractor? I think so. Vigilance, Life Link, pretty good. Our opponent's not going to be able to remove it. Okay, so what do we want here? Probably just a Swamp for our land is fine. Uh, an Enchantment can be the Animate Dead. Instant probably in two and then reanimate so we can just go again and our opponent's scooping off they've seen the cards all right so some amount of graveyard hate is going to be coming our way i will take this megas of the moon against the eldrazi deck that seems like a given Ooh, i'm usually expecting something like ley line perhaps so we have these as options if we want to go a little bit more try and control the game we can do this but i don't think that's worth doing i think we're probably just looking at this selection of six cards here 
How do I feel about Molten Collapse? We might need to blow up a Chalice. But these things we're doing here sort of go over a Chalice anyway. So we probably don't actually need that. We can't board out any monsters because we need as many monsters as possible if we're trying to show and tell. Which means we also need as many of our Faces Lootings to dig to the combo of these two because we need to have both of these in hand. For boarding and show and tells, we're probably going to be boarding out something like the Shallow Graves. I think that's probably the weakest of our reanimation spells. Because this one doesn't return our opponent's creatures if we need to do that. I don't think we can get rid of Entombs. Uh, grief is obviously great. Unmask is pretty handy to check the coast is clear. Do I want these Unmasks? I think I probably need the Unmasks as well as the Molten Collapse. It's a little bit tricky. Thoughtseize is kind of awkward because our opponent's going to be doing Chalice on one and we don't really want to be losing life in a matchup that's going to be quite life dependent. There is an argument to bring in some Molten Collapses. I think take out a Thoughtseize to bring in a Molten Collapse and we'll probably take out an Unmask. This means we're also not massively hammered by Chalice in the same way. Like, we obviously still got, you know, eight one-drops. Um, or do we take out Grief? Because Grief doesn't enable our combo if we're doing our combo as a thing. So we could trim on Grief a little bit. Although Grief puts stuff in our opponent's graveyard. We definitely can't board any fast mana because our opponent is a Wasteland deck. I don't know what the options are apart from the Unmask or the Grief here. I don't want to board out any fast mana. Unless we only just have two Molten Collapse. Maybe we'll try two, mo two Molten Collapse. We do have to watch out for Kozilek's command exiling things in the graveyard Ugh. not a big fan of this one so colette's command can exile things from the graveyard but if they're holding up mana to do that they're not really advancing their board which is fine by us as well i think we have to mulligan this one the mana's a little awkward triple in two isn't where i want to be when i'm expecting to see a ley line or something from our opponent they're a very good magic the gathering player uh what does this one do it's not doing a lot is it i like that we had the show and tell oh wows it's trousers um, what am I going to do with this? Like, we can keep an Archon. So we have, like, this sort of stuff. And just get rid of these two monsters. So we can show and tell this in. Or we'll have a Faith is Looting option. But is this going to get us where we need to be, is the question. So we're going to have to draw in Tombs, Unmasks, or Faith is Lootings. Or Mana. I, we're going to need one Mana and the Show and Tell. So that's quite a lot of draws, actually. That's a lot of hits. All right, we'll try and keep this one. I think we get rid of one reanimate and one monster here. That way we can put one in the graveyard with a, a, a draw discard effect. And then we can also... Okay, so we don't need to try and do any draw discard effects. Understood. So now we're looking for the show and tell, ideally. And some mana to make it happen. All right. So that's part of the equation that we're looking for. We have no surveil land, so we're just going to keep it like this so we can protect ourselves. If we find an unmask, we can still look at our opponent's hand and take out a monster. And we've already seen the Null Drifter. If they've kept them in, we might be able to just steal a Null Drifter, uh, sorry, a Null Drifter, and go to town with it. It's going to be a thought answer. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. So they take the Dark Ritual here. I'm pretty sure that stops us from potentially show and telling next turn. If they've got more thought answers, they might just try and strip us of all the monsters. Right, it's the Dark Ritual. We will play another land. I'm pretty sure we're not winning this one. Glaring Flesh Raker. Yep, that's going to snowball out of control pretty darn quickly. So we're going to get bash for four. And every turn just makes our reanimate more and more precarious. Uh, Dark Ritual. That is the sort of thing I'm interested in. If our opponent wants to waste a turn wastelanding us, I don't hate that. But we got three, four, five mana. So we need another Dark Ritual and another land. And then we get to hard cast an Arcan of Cruelty. Secluded Courtyard. That means we're almost certainly looking at a build with line breakers. So there's going to be a kick sewing mica spawn, I believe. There it is. So we have one more draw step, basically. So we're going to hit our bad lands here, I believe. So we don't have time to try and draw into enough rituals and mana sources to go off with just dark rituals and hard casting a creature. But we can still show and tell, put in an arc of cruelty, and that stabilizes the board a little bit. All right, so we'll take. Some more damage to the face. Now, I probably might be able to kill us through a guy as well. Faith is looting. All right. It's what we've got. Let's loot away. I don't think we're winning this one. All right. So, do we want to have even more insurance against our graveyards being tampered with? So, we could board in just some, like, guys. We could do a couple of Douthi and Sheldred. And that can sometimes do all right. If we had something like that, what are we... Like, we're already boarding in so many things here, though. 
I don't think that's how I should be playing this one. I think we should be doing as we're doing. So we've got the ability to bounce it. We've got the ability to show and tell. We can just play a Megs of the Moon and then just shut our opponent down. And then we have enough stuff that I'm okay with how it is. Our opponent will almost certainly mulligan to Leyline in the Void. Oh, they've confirmed that they have it. And they also mulligan to it in that game. I'm pretty sure that we can rely on our opponent to do that because that's what the matchup is about. What does this hand do? We can grief and take our opponent's creatures. That seems fine to me. I will keep this. Yep, you can have your ley line. Okay, so they've got a Devourer of De Destiny. That's quite nice for us. Uh, I think we grief pitching the Dark Ritual here. And that way, if we find another black card, we can then reanimate another creature next turn. That's what you're working with over there, opponent. Uh, I would quite like your Devourer of Destiny here. It's just a massive yacht. Although Wastegate Battle Mage can bounce it, which is a pain. But can they bounce? Their hand will not be able to bounce on the next turn. So we can just get the 6-6 six, six this turn. And then we can hit the Battle Mage next turn. Uh, I think we're just going to get a Swamp here. Alright, we have a large friend. There's no draw they can have that allows them to put this Battle Mage onto the stack. And then next turn we can unmask it. But maybe we have more choice of what we pitch to the unmask. A Grizzlebrand. Okay, I would like to pitch that, I guess. Okay, so we are taking the battle mage here because we don't want our guy getting bounced. Because if they find like an ancient two, then we just lose that guy. So we crash for six. I think it is worth getting a grizzly bear here. All right, we just did the thing. I've had that happen to me back in the day when I played the old-fashioned Eldrazi deck. Uh, yeah, the plan worked. Let's go to round two. We don't have actual reanimates here. We can just hard cast a turn one grief. We go Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, we can Grief, and then possibly cast the Entomb still. Is that good enough? It doesn't feel great. We're just looking for one of, what, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11 reanimation spells to draw off the top to really make this one pop. I think we can do better. We're on the play as well, so we should be going for a really aggressive hand, like this one. So we keep this, we bottom a land. So we have a choice here. We can just go for it on turn one and hope our opponent doesn't have anything. Let's see if they are F6 when I crack this fetch land. They're not. Okay. So that means we probably need to take things a touch slower. So I think we grief pitching this dark ritual. And then we can just end a turn into untap reanimate. Or animate even. Not reanimate. That's a Force of will pitching baleful strix. Baleful strix does not strike me as a deck that's, as, a, as a place that's going to be jamming us up with their own reanimates. I think our opponent is on a fairer deck here. In case of Force of Negation main deck, I'm going to entomb in their upkeep. That way we play around Dave's as well. Uh, which giant monster would I like most? Probably the Atraxa here. Although Grizzlebrand is better with Animate Dead. Alright, I'll take the Grizzlebrand. I wonder why our opponent was so keen on Force of Willing. Uh, let's hope they don't. Right, they're going to force Thoughts these away our Animate Dead. So we just need to draw a reanimation spell here. That's why they were very keen on that. Okay, I will play this land that they know about. And we have an Entomb. I can use this Entomb to put like a Faith is Looting in the graveyard so that we're able to find some stuff. If we find another land, a Ponder. But the problem with doing that is if we draw the land next turn and we cast Faith is Looting, we are just drawing two and discarding two. We need to have cards in hand to retain cards in hand at the end of the spell's resolution. Let's All right, I think this is time for Entomb. And... Do I just want to put an Ark of Cruelty so I have the option of removal or just having a big lifelinking body? I think both having both those options is probably better than putting the looting in the graveyard. Although I'm not 100% sure. So if I put the looting in the graveyard, we need to wait at least two turns before it becomes a relevant Magic the Gathering card. I still think that's fine. I'm not going to fetch the Thim because I don't want to expose ourselves to Wasteland. And Unmask. That's not the one, is it? Let's pass. Yeah, so the Baleful Strix our opponent pitched to the... Force of Will early on sort of showed us that our opponent was more of like a sort of controly mid rangey style list. I haven't seen any Rescavenator lists playing the uh, the Owl. This looks like a Merc Tide. Yep. And it's a 7-7, seven, seven, so it will fight pretty well against uh, our poor little Grizzlebrand. Alright, I'm not going to pay 7 life, because if our opponent removes our creature, that's not good for us. But we, what we can do here is we can trade and draw 7 once the block's already locked in. And I'm perfectly happy exchanging this for seven cards on a Merchside region. Alright, our opponent's had enough. Uh, us drawing an extra seven, even though this hand is actually pretty bad. 
like, we are going to cast a Faith is Looting, so we're going to get closer to that Shallow Grave. It's going to take us a couple of turns to get anywhere, but our opponent's not going to have a hand or be able to play the game. All right. What do I think our opponent is going to be doing? I think Shouldered is going to be actively good against our opponent's deck. They're going to have some amount of Graveyard Hate. They look like they're straight blue-black, which means I don't think the Mage of the Moon is going to have a lot of use. They're going to have some amount of Graveyard Hate, so we probably want something along these lines. I don't think I'm in the market for a Molten Collapse here. Although, we do need to respect Psychic Frog. How much do we respect Psychic Frog? We could respect it a little bit with a couple of pushes. We could respect it a lot with these five. And that's something we have to consider here. The Shadow Graves are probably going to be actively useful in this matchup as well, because our opponent might have a spell that removes something like a Surgical Extraction or a Cling to Dust or something like that. What are we removing to fit these in? This is always where it's tricky with a deck like this, because the deck is so compact with the things it's trying to accomplish. I think... Uh, do I want these show and tells over Shadow Graves, though? I just said that the Shadow Graves are useful for getting over the top of some of what our opponent's doing. But at the same point, we can just ignore the graveyard and put the show and tails in. So we've got three show and tails off of that. And maybe we'll trim and unmask to get the next one. I think we can afford to go a touch slower and use the thought seizes rather than unmasks here. We'll get us a shouldered, which is just a nice thing we can dark ritual out and win the game with. Dalthy Void Walk is probably over unmasks as well. Or should I be trimming one of our entombs? I don't think I want to tr trim our entombs here. This is going to be harder for us to put stuff in the graveyard, but we need to put stuff in the graveyard less because we have show and tells. Uh, we get one of these back. Do I just want this Miser's Molten well, Collapse here? I think so. It blows up Spell Spellbomb as well, which a lot of people have been reaching for. All right, we'll try it like this and see what happens. Like We can always just remove our opponent's Psychic Frog and reanimate if, uh, if it's in their hand. Well, this is a turn two, potentially even a turn one guy. A Thought Seize. So we're going to lose the Animate Dead here. I think that's uh, a given. I just want to really help us out and put a grizzle brand in the bin for us. Suspect that is not what is happening. Oh, it's Faith is looting. Okay, so they're going for the enabler rather than the other thing. Alright, I can understand that. So we've got seven cards. We could just draw and discard next turn. I think I'm going to try and do that. Using the core rules of the game as an enabler for reanimation. If our opponent has another piece of discard, then that's obviously going to be like a time walk. At this point, next turn, we can go to our discard step. We can throw away the Grizzle Brand and bring it back. Oh, our opponent's got a Dark Ritual in their deck. That surprises me. Ah, oh, okay. I see. I see. We're on that Doomsday Life. So we might just be dead this turn. This was not what I expected our opponent's deck to be when I saw Duff in game one. I thought we were looking at like a mid rangey blue black sort of control shell. I was expecting things like Tamios. Possibly Nether Goyf. Although I think I'll probably just run the Merc Tides over the Goyfs in the sort of slower deck. Yeah, so we're looking at like a Tempo Doomsday list. Haven't seen one of those for a while, but pretty cool. See what they do with their Doomsday. All right, they are just constructing their pile now. They've made their choices. Let's see what they've got in here. So they've got Leyline of the Void. That's an important one to note. Uh, and they've got the Douthy as well. Okay, this isn't a Kill Us Immediately pile. That's something. It's going to get Swamp here. Let's cast a Faith is Looting. I'll put this Grizzle Brand into my graveyard along with a land. I have to choose the order because I have cards that actually matter. Let's try and reanimate this Grizzle Brand. Our life total does not matter in this matchup. All right, let's pay seven. See if we can find any hand disruption. We did find some hand disruption. So let's disrupt our opponents. Uh, I think we're probably just getting rid of the Entomb here. We don't need that one anymore. Well, it's probably quicker than doing a show and tell, isn't it? About the same. All right. I don't believe that this is going to make any difference and our opponent is just going to win the game. All right, we got rid of an Edge of Autumn. It might be something. We get a clean up. We'll discard our Arcan of Cruelty here. And probably one of, one of these show and tells. All right. What is our opponent's pile? Cycling Street Race. Cycling something else. Cycling something else. We lose the game. They can be pretty confident to just play the uh, Thassa's Oracle with cards still left in library, but it doesn't look like they're going to do that because they're going to fetch off of this land. The bottom card's going to be... Oh, they just got the Unearthed plan. Yeah, who's the Reanimator deck now? All oh, right, our opponent's deck is not what I expected it to be. Megs of the Moon actually good against Doomsday because they are a blue deck that splashes for a black, black, black spell. This also makes me more inclined to have 
some of this, and I don't really care about Psychic Frog because we didn't see any in there. So possibly having more of this sort of stuff is where I would like to be. How do we fit that in? Shodrid is very good here. I'm not convinced by Dathy Voivor because although they do pressure our opponent's life total in an annoying fashion, but I don't think that's good enough just having two of those. Now we're looking for a couple more cuts. We did see the Ley Line of the Void, which does make some of our graveyard -y stuff a little bit awkward. So maybe we could trim on something like that. Do we have the time to be Fatus Looting? Yes, I think we do. Um... We're in a bit of a trickier spot to work out what to cut here. Now we need to keep in all of our hand attraction because our opponent is a combo deck. We need to keep our own ways of winning the game in because otherwise we won't win the game. We've seen the ley line, so we can't really afford to have a hand that is entirely graveyard based. Do we want this to bounce a ley line potentially as well since we have seen the ley lines? What does that mean? Are we trimming like an entomb? Are we just going to shuffle some numbers around? And hope for the best. Alright, we'll try that. This is Grief Reanimate Grief into a combo matchup. That's not a bad place to be. And then we have a show and tell for Grizzlebrand later on. If they put a Ley Line into play, yeah, okay. So what we're doing now is just griefing, pitching Animate Dead. Now our opponents spent their opening hand to have two Ley Lines. And we're going to take another card. Street Race, Dowsy Voidwalker. Um, I will take... I kind of want to take the Dowdy Void Walker and just apply some pressure. I could take the Street Wraith and apply pressure too. But the Dowdy Void Walker means that we can mess with any cards they spend. Intriguing. Alright. Dowdy Void Walker is. Not quite the Psychic Frog I was hoping for. But they didn't really show us Psychic Frog stuff when they flipped over the whole deck with the Doomsday. We're on a more defensive line with the Baleful Strixes because they can be pretty reasonable into Psychic Frogs because they can always block them and trade. Ponder. So this is going to go into the void of our Dathy Voidwalker if we feel the need for a ponder at some point. But I think we're just going to pressure our opponent's life total as best we can here. There is no point casting this Faith is Looting, really. Because we have two of the cards we want in hand, so if we cast a Faith is Looting, we're just going to be putting two cards into exile. Whereas if we wait till next turn, we might be able to get something that we actually want to remain in our hand. Cycling the old Street Wraith. Shot. A Vexing Bauble. Lotus Petal, straight into this Vexing Ball. Lovely. Alright, let's get a Badlands. And we'll start doing some Faith's Looting. It is awkward because we could just wait and have the blue mana off of the the other thing we want. Uh, if we're getting rid of this Lotus Petal, is this a turn where we have to grief our opponent? I don't think it is. I think we just bin off a Grizzle Brand here. And continue this little merry dance. And then next turn, hopefully we'll draw another black card for the Grief or a Dark Ritual or something. Alright, they're just going to... Alright. Yeah, I suspect they might crack the bauble there. So maybe we're supposed to keep the Lotus Petal just in case they do that, but then our hand is very weak. Animate dead. So that was healthy. Now we can pitch cast this Grief. Looking for fetch lands, we're looking for Lotus Petals. Uh, doomsday, Doomsday, Force of Will, Force of Will, Thoughtseize. Well, we're probably not taking the Doomsdays off of our opponent, are we? Uh, Thoughtseize is kind of an awkward one for them to cast. I think we take the Force here. Because this puts a Force of Will underneath our Doughty Voidwalker, if that's a thing we want to have happen. Also stops them being able to Force of Will unless they draw a blue card. But if they draw a blue card, most of their blue cards are things they want to cast, like Ponder and Brainstorm. Alright, I think we attack here. There's no point doing this looting. So if our opponent Doomsdays, now they die. So they have to Doomsday and win, and we got the match! One little Dathy Void Walker and a bit of hand disruption was all it took. Excellent. It's when we get up against a deck that's got ley lines but also doesn't really play many creatures. That's going to be a tricky one. Or creatures that are even worth reanimating. If our opponent's hand didn't have the Dathy Void Walker in, we could have taken the uh, Street Race. But maybe our opponent cycles it in response anyway. Uncertain. Alright, two rounds in, two rounds one. Let's go to round three. Um, yeah, so we unmask, target in ourselves, put Grizzle Brand in the graveyard. Land, Lotus Pearl, Animate Dead. Alright, seems reasonable. The other option is to take it slower. So this is just, we can either grief our opponent this turn and then draw any black card for next turn. Or we can force a will check. This would have been, I think because we've played the land out here, we don't want it to be susceptible to waste that. I am just going to go for it here. Sometimes you got to jam. And hopefully this is one of those times where it works out. 
But we have our creature in the graveyard now. So any reanimation spell is great. All right. We failed the force of will check. And they pitched a psychic frog. If our opponent has a reanimate here, we are in some amount of trouble. This matchup should be absolutely horrible if it is just blue battery scavenator. Our deck just should be able to absolutely farm us. Because they can reanimate our big monsters whilst hitting like key bits. Tamiyo. Okay. That is suggesting they're more on the controlly build. Which is good news for us. I will play this Bloodstained Mire because we have two mana reanimate spells. Our other lands we will be keeping in hand for the purposes of Faith is Looting, I think. So if we did the line where we waited, we wouldn't have been able to even attempt it this turn either. And our opponent just gets to sculpt and do stuff. All right, just going upstairs with a Tamiyo. And it's eventually going to pop and draw a bunch of cards. So hopefully we can win the game before that happens. It doesn't take much given what our deck does. But we need something. Shadow Grave would be pretty handy. Not a Shadow Grave. So like I said, I think we keep this in hand for a phase. The problem is if we draw a land next turn, we don't get to cast a Grief. But the issue with that is if we're drawing lands, we're probably not having a great time anyway. This Grief is not going to be able to beat this Tamiya. All right. Psychic Frog. Okay, so we are in trouble. All the Grief does if we cast it is... Right, they're returning the Force of Will. Okay, so now we have something we actually want to Grief out of our opponent's hand. Understood. A Dark Ritual. Let's cast Dark Ritual and see what happens here. So this might be Bait, or it might be something good. Our opponent doesn't actually know. I think we have to play the land out just so we don't get dazed, because that would be really shameful. All right. Let's see how scary it is over there. I'm guessing it's very scary. All right, they're just stifling it. So they still have a Force of Will. They've got a bunch of cards in hand. Do I force my opponent to discard two cards for this Psychic Frog? I don't know how we're going to win this. Right, our opponent is playing uh, a deck that's got a lot of stuff in play against us that is going to do some real work. All right, we're just getting buried by the frog. We know we have to get through a force of will. So we need either two reanimation spells or a piece of discard animation spell. And the discard has to be a piece that we can actually use. So something like an unmask isn't going to work here. A faith is looting. That doesn't help us because we have no other cards in hand. And the Psychic Frog just ticking up and going wild. Emperor of Bones. Yeah, okay. I'm done with that. <laughs> they just get to take out our Grizzle Brand and have that whenever they want. Okay, so this is a matchup where Shouldered looks good. I think we probably want to have some stuff to get around graveyard things. How much do we need to respect the Frog? I don't want to be, like, trying to play a control deck because our deck does that very poorly. Alright, so... Let's just get these... Show and tells in first, and then we can work out what else is going on here. Like grief reanimate grief is still a very good thing to be doing, so I think I'll probably trim and unmask for a shouldered, and then it's a case of do I want to strip away my opponent's creatures? Would I rather have some pushes in there? I think so. Partly for Tamio, partly for Frog. We'll take a molten collapse because it can hit a null spell bomb. We'll try something along these lines. Uh, obviously, we can still thought seize ourselves and our opponent. Grief only hits our opponent, so it's not an enabler, but it does give us grief reanimate grief lines, which is obviously pretty strong. Mm, I don't think this goes anywhere. Let's mulligan. It's very slow to do anything. Uh, okay, we can keep this. Um, we don't need all these lands. Do we just get rid of the Archon? Get rid of the Archon here. And then we just thought seize our opponent. And then next turn we can Entomb Reanimate if the coast is clear. If not, then that's a different problem, but we'll work that out later. So we want to thought these right away, so I'll probably have a chance to brainstorm and hide things. Graft Digger's Cage. Graft Digger's Cage. Emperor of Bones. Fatal Push. That is a lot. So definitely playing a Graft Digger's Cage. So there's no point taking both of them. So this means we have to win through playing a guy or show and telling which means we probably have to take the emperor of bones yikes a graphic's cage who'd have thought but at least our opponent has another one so it's like not the best for them well you know what we've got plenty of useless cards so let's start doing some looting mm -hmm. we do have a molten collapse in our deck i don't think this is a turn i care about thought seizing we have a Stifle as well that we need to worry about. Okay, Faith is looting. Help me out here. 
half of the problem, uh, half of the puzzle here. Okay, so our opponent does run wasteland, so we're definitely getting rid of this reanimate, and we're probably just getting rid of a land. We need to keep the blue land, so it has to be the bad lands here, and we will we'll play out our land. But I don't really want to crack it at all. While, the, while there's wasteland and stifle potential in our future. Brainstorm is incredibly good for our opponent there. I think we can safely assume the cage is gone. I think we are looking to thoughts these closer to when we're going off. Because we don't know. Like we could try and go off next turn. But we don't know if that's actually going to work. So what we need to do here is wait. All right, wasteland. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah. So we need to wait until the last moment to thought seize so that we can check the coast is clear on the turn we're actually trying to win the game. Okay, they kept a sec. They kept the cage. All right. I wasn't sure if they would keep the second one, but it's just insurance, isn't it? A dark ritual. That means that we get to dark ritual, thought seize, show and tell. But we do need to find a monster, and we do need to get through this stifle and potentially what else our opponent has. Shoulder the apocalypse, though. Is that good enough to show and tell in? Not when our opponent sat there with a fatal push. I don't think it is. So they get to start ticking up with the old Tamio here. There's a clue. And a brainstorm, so Tamio's going to flip. Another wasteland. Doesn't necessarily hurt us that much, but it certainly doesn't help us either. Let's draw a giant scary monster. Not a giant scary monster. Let's cast a dark ritual. Let's cast a thought seize, targeting our opponent. And then we can dark ritual into the Sheldred. Brazen Borrower, Fatal Push. It is annoying. It is annoying. If we shoulder it, they're just going to borrow it. We can take the Stifle and plan for a better future if we draw a big scary monster. But then we have to worry about them borrowing the monster. Yikes. It's tough. It's real tough. If we take the Borrower, they have less threats, but the threat they have is the Tamiyo. This is a tough call. I think the high roll here is take the Stifle so that we can actually cast our spell down the line. I'm not just going to play this straight into a fatal push here. But we also can't fetch the blue source because of the wasteland. So we have to wait until we actually are in a position to cast the show and tell for some good value. That would be good value, wouldn't it? So they can borrow with this is the issue. Should have cracked this first in case we do another stifle. They get to put the borrower in if they want to, but they're just going to use it to bounce. I know, they're going to use this to sacrifice instead of the planeswalker. Oh, they had another borrower. A swell of riches there. Yeah, because they can put this in so they don't have to sacrifice a Tamiyo. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good draw. Now we lose our only blue source, so another show and tell is very difficult here. We just get absolutely clowned on by this deck. The blue-black shell and legacy right now is certainly too strong. I think we're going to see two bands minimum in a short space of time. Uh, so this just draws them their library next time they win the game. Sure. Yeah, that was tough. Like, if they don't have the Borrower there, they probably put, have to put in the Borrower so they don't lose their Tamiyo. And then they can't kill our Arcan of Cruelty or remove our Arcan of Cruelty. They're in a good spot. So they, they probably only have two Borrowers in their deck as well. So it was a bit unfortunate that it worked out that way. Oh, well. Let's go to the fourth match. Our hand doesn't do much in the way of reanimating, does it? But we've got a lot of, in, of stuff we can do still. This is one I'm on the fence about. I think I'm going to give it a go just to see how it plays out. I'm not a reanimator expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I think having ways of looking at our opponent's hand as well as putting our creature in the bin automatically anyway, digging into one of our many reanimation spells. Yeah, I'll give this one a go. I'm going to cast the Feathers Looting before I cast the Grief because I'd like to know what is best to pitch. And if our opponent wants to spend counter magic on a Feathers Looting while we're sat here with a bunch of Entombs, then be my guest. Okay... I don't think we're going to need this underground C. We can bin off this Grizzle Brand. And then we can have a little look at what our opponent is working with. This is where we see a reanimate. Fatal Push, Brainstorm. Right, these cards don't matter that much. I think the correct pick here is probably the Ponder to sort of slow our opponent's roll. We're going to lose some stuff to their Wasteland. But that's okay. We've got a lot of reanimation spells in our deck. We need to find them, but... I think we're going to get wastelanded on turn one because we took their ponder. Yep, there it is. But we only need one black mana. Play swamp. I don't think we want to be just thought seizing because we don't know when we're going to need to check that the coast is clear yet. Because we might need to draw a few cards first before we actually try and put a reanimation spell on the stack. 
Grizzle Brown and Orcish Blowmasters aren't the best friends in the world. Right, we got a Brainstorm popping off here. There's no Surveil Lands in our deck, so we don't have to worry about that either. Mr. Rainforest, they kept one of the cards of the Brainstorm so far. I imagine they're going to crack this and put the Bowmasters into play in our end step. So Phase of becomes a little bit more awkward. Is that Ritual not really where I want to be? Uh, we could try and Faith is Looting this turn by casting Dark Ritual, Thought Seizing our opponent, they play the Bowmasters, then we Faith is Looting, get pinged for quite a lot. It was a little bit awkward. And then they get to bash us for a lot, and that just turns off Reanimate. I don't think that's the way. I think we just pass a turn here and let them get the Bowmasters in. And just save the Thought Seize to try and punch a hole that we can try and reanimate a Grizzlebrand in. Undercity Sewers. Okay, and some surveil action going. So not playing the Bowmasters. But if we thought he's there, I'm 100% sure our opponent's going to play the Bowmasters. Grief. Okay. Opponent probably has their own reanimation spells here, which is going to be awkward. So more than one in six cards in our deck is a reanimation spell. And we are 13 cards deep now. And we haven't found one. So statistically, we should have found two reanimation spells by now. So I'm okay with the keep. Statistically, it was a fine thing to do. It just hasn't worked out for us. Which is how Magic the Gathering works sometimes. So another land and a Dark Ritual gets us an attempt at casting the Archon of Cruelty. Our opponent's got Hardcast Grief Banner. Psychic Frog. Alright, things going to go pretty poorly for us from here on out. Although it hasn't exactly been going swimmingly so far either. Send in the Clowns. We go to 16. Obviously our Life Turtle is a resource that we tap into with our Reanimates and our Thought Seizers. So attacking us like this is going to be very effective for our opponent. It's going to make our draws worse as well as giving us less of them. Thought Seize. All right, that's something for the turn we want to try and go off. But the issue is we don't have one of our reanimation spells. And we're now a quarter of the way through our deck. We can take at least four here. And they're going to draw a bonus card. It's Wasteland. That doesn't really matter here. Tell me, I'm actually kind of surprised they played the Wasteland. I think that's just better as a plus one plus one counter. A scrubland. All right, we're not playing that because of obvious reasons. So wasteland actually slightly relevant there. When we draw dark ritual, we still get to at least attempt our thing. Many friends coming in to attack us. They can flip the Tamiya if that's the thing they want to do. Yeah, I'm happy to call it there. So we've seen a reanimate from our opponent. I don't know how much into rescamming they are. If they're just scamming it, or they're going full into the entomb package as well. Uh, they're probably going to have cyclers, so the Megs of the Moon isn't going to do very much work. Dante Voidwalk is probably reasonable here. Show and Tell's probably reasonable. Shouldered very good. This removal also something that we can reach for if we want to. I think we get rid of the Shadow Greys as we've been doing in a lot of rounds. I think that's acceptable. Um, get rid of these Unmasks. Further Molten Collapse. I don't really want to be fetching Red Banner and just getting Wastelanded. And then we've just got one more thing to cut here. Our opponent has their own Reanimates, which is certainly an issue that we have to consider. Maybe we're supposed to board in these fire macabres instead of pushes. And then we just need one more cut. We're just looting because they've got bowmasters and things. And we don't need to put stuff in the graveyard as much because we have the show and tells. Right, I'll keep this. I don't think we're just firing off this faith is looting. Like, what is that actually doing for us? Like, we already have the plan we want. If we cast this, like, we already have the three lands we want as well. I think I just play the swamp here. Undercity Sewers, getting their Surveil on. Just a Pluto Delta, nothing to worry about. Depending on what we draw, this is a turn we might want to Faith is Looting. Any scrub land. I don't really want to expose myself to Wasteland is the problem. So I don't think we're casting this. And the hope is that next turn, we draw a black card. So we get to grief our opponent, show and tell, put in Arcan of Cruelty, and that can win us the game. That's what we're aiming for. We're just going to see like a Psychic Frog here. Uh, we are the ones getting griefed. So this is obviously a disaster. Yeah, I don't know how you can play the red-black reanimator deck into the blue-black rescaminator deck. It just feels so horrible. Because they have all the ways to stop you from doing your thing whilst capitalising on the fact that you have a thing that you're doing as well. It's just grim. All right, let's try a thoughts these first. And then we know what we're trying to beat with our face looting. I think we're going to see a brainstorm to hide cards. So they could hide a reanimate on top. That way we don't get to... Alright, it's just a Bowmasters. Obviously that's bad in a different way for us. A day to forget the bad lands. Pay. We're just going to have nothing but lands in hand. Two Surgical Extractions. Understood. 
I'll play out this scrub land because I think our opponent might target that rather than the Badlands. And I don't want them to target the Badlands. They are reanimating our grief. I think we just call it here. We're just getting absolutely clowned by this matchup. It's It feels unwinnable to me. Like We have to have like the ideal turn one or nothing, right? We're not winning a game that lasts more than three turns ever against this deck. All right, so that's four rounds in. We're two and two. Uh, and smashed up by the blue-black sort of Psychic Frog decks. Not a surprise, but we're beating other things. So let's see if we can put a positive on the board. All right, we're on the play. We don't have a way of putting anything into the bin, so I think we have to mulligan this one. Yeah, I can work with this one. We we'll probably get rid of the Shadow Grave here. So we're in a bit of a bind in some respects, because we have to get a bad land here. If we don't find a land, that becomes awkward for us if they wasteland us. We also are in danger of getting reanimated on, but that matchup's so horrible we may, we may as well just deal with it. All right, we're just getting a force, pitching a brainstorm on our faith is looting. All right. At least we can flash that back soon. So if we dart ritual off of a land, we can flash back the Faith of Looting and still reanimate. We've already got a piece of permission out of our opponent's hand. A Lotus Petal. Okay, this is giving me Doomsday vibes. Yep. All right, that's a Doomsday. All right, let's have a quick peek at their build. Oh, they're a Teferi build. They got the One Ring in here as well. Vexing Bauble. Teferi as like an option they can reach for. All righty. I'm not expecting this to go well for us. Entomb. Uh, okay. This might go well for us. We'll see. Dark Ritual. Entomb. I want the Grizzle Brand here. So we can draw as many cards as humanly possible. And I think we are Animate Deading it. Because that gives us an additional seven cards we get to draw. If we get dazed, we get dazed. Draw a bunch of cards. We're looking for some sort of Shallow Grave type thing going on here. We don't have a Shadow Grave though. We can probably put another Arc... We can put some Arcan of Cruelties into play, I imagine. Uh, we have... No, we have the Arcan of Cruelty in hand, so we have one in the graveyard. So I think we play this one out, cast our Dark Rituals and our Petals, so we get all our mana out of our hands. We can see what's in our hand a little bit easily. If we gain three life, uh, so if we cast this in Tomb, put an Arcan of Cruelty into play, that gains us three life on the spot, which allows us to draw seven more. So let's go and get the Archon back. Takes one of our opponent's cards. Okay, the Shallow Grave. How... Okay, so we now unmask, targeting ourselves. Pitching unmask. Discard this. Shallow Grave it. And then we get to attack them with our Archon of Cruelty and win the game. Alright! Pretty amazed we managed to get through that one. I'll take it. Uh, I would like the Magus of the Moon and the Shouldred in this one. The last Doomsday player we saw had the Ley Lines. So I am kind of incentivized to do some sort of turn tail stuff. Maybe I do want these Douthies. I don't think we want the Molten Collapse. We want all the hand destruction we can get our hands on. So this pile does not get to change. How do I feel about Faith's Lootings? Maybe the Lootings go here. Is that wild? Like we don't need neighbor, as many neighbors if we've got Show and Tells. Our black cards are going to be pitching to our groups and our masks because we need to be aggressively doing that. And then three cards. Are we just getting rid of the Shadow Graves? Now, we did see the power of Shadow Grave right there. So maybe we get rid of Animate Deads and just keep the Shadow Graves and see how that goes. Should board in an Echoing Truth like this. Do ourselves seven reanimation spells. Mm. So we get to strip two cards from our opponent's hand, but they're on the play so they can brainstorm things away. Not really going to be great for us because we don't have our own game plan here. I will Mulligan. Um... This does require us to draw a land, but it's pretty spicy. We get to unmask ourselves, put the Grizzle Brand in the graveyard, Dark Ritual into Shallow Grave. I don't think I can keep this No Lander, but it is tempting. Okay, we're both on five cards here. Okay, we have a Grief Reanimate Grief Hand. That's excellent. We've got to put two of these cards away. It's definitely the Unmask. It's probably the Dark Ritual, and we hold the Show and Tell. Or, if they have a Ley Line, we can do turn 1 Grief, Pitched, and then turn 2 Hard Cast Grief for off of any land. So let's try that. And that should be a reasonable amount of pressure that can get this game won. So our opponent is not really going to fight by removing our creatures, they're going to fight by countering our spells. And just winning the game. Alright, Thoughtseize. What are you going to do to us? Our hand is pretty good against the old Thoughtseize. They probably take the Reanimate so we don't get to hit them twice. 
Yeah, our opponent agrees. So let's pet all dark ritual nonsense afterwards from our opponent. A thought seize, you say. Right, I would like to cast this thought seize rather than this grief right now. So if we draw another land, we can just start churning away. Um, they don't have many cards to move around, so I think we take the ponder. So ponder digs deeper individually, whereas the brainstorm takes more. Like we could uh, try and grief out the the brainstorm as well, but I'm pretty sure our opponent's casting it, and then we get to have a look at their hand after they've cast a brainstorm and see how they fixed it. Although now they're in a thing of like, do they hide something on top? All of the things they would want to hide on top also require them to have another card to do stuff with, so like a dart ritual or a cabal ritual. I guess they could just keep a land in hand and play a land and then draw the dark, the doomsday on the turn afterwards. That works. A reasonably potent line. Obviously, they have to find these cards. All right, a poet polluted delta rather than the fetch land we knew about. That is an interesting choice. Uh, a reanimate, you say? Don't mind if I do. I think we. Probably keep the ritual over the grief. Let's have a look. I'm not expecting to have two cards that we can actually get rid of here. Just a brainstorm. So I could put a threat into play just to have a grief beating down. I think we have to do that due to the nature of our opponent's deck. They can just kind of win out of nowhere. So our opponent doesn't have anything to get. So they could have a Doomsday on top and cast Doomsday this turn and probably win on the next turn. That's like worst case scenario for us. All right, and here is the Doomsday. All right, our opponent's done their pile. Let's have a look what... Okay, so there's a, a one ring that they've got in their deck. Consigned to memory. There's an interesting one there. Uh, I guess it can stop some spooky triggers. Lion's Eye Diamond is not in their pile. Okay. I think our opponent wins next turn. They just have a cycle pile. We'll do the thing that we can do here, but I'm pretty sure our opponent's got this one. There's not really a lot of cyclers in the old graveyard over there. So they've probably just got a deck full of them and then they just cast the Thassa's Oracle knowing that we can't really interact due to the nature of our deck. All right, so consider mills off something and then they just have a couple of cyclers. Yeah, and then they can cast the Oracle now or they can do Edge of Autumn. All right, so they've got an empty deck and they've got a Thassa's Oracle. All right, so it's the third game that we're looking for here. I didn't see any of the big Haymaker graveyard hate. But that might just be changing things around on the play versus on the draw. I think we're just going to jam in like we've got it. I like that Dante Voidwalker can apply pressure and do various things. Um, this is a turn one Magus of the Moon. That might just be enough to win a game. So I'm going to keep this one. Oh, look. We're accidentally Mono Red Prison. Who'd have thought? We will need to draw a Black Source if we ever want to cast spells again. Question here is, what do we pitch to Grief? We could pitch the Entomb. So that we have another bite of the cherry later on. Or we can hold up the hopes of this. I think we are going to keep the grief in hand. Because if we don't have any mana to cast our spells due to our own Magus of the Moon. I would rather have a grief that we can actually cast just by pitch casting things. Alright, let's see what our opponent's working with. No basic lands, please. Flutterstorm, Force of Will, Doomsday. Okay, we'll take the Force of Will here. And then we will Magus of the Moon on turn one. The Dream. Not necessarily the reanimator player's dream, but we're doing it. Our opponent has no interaction, so we know that we are all good to make the friend. So this might mean our opponent doesn't get to cast any spells for the rest of the game. It has to be down for 10 turns, but we can find other stuff to augment it. If we find a swamp and a dark ritual, we're laughing. Good old Magus of the Moon. I don't think we need to fire this off just yet. The hand doesn't do anything. They have, like, possibly one of each basic in their deck. So if they're in the bottom, like... 40 cards. All right, our opponent just doesn't want to play it. And we got there with the Makers of the Moon Cheese against the Doomsday. Pretty nice. We got a 3-2 there. We beat two Doomsday decks. Uh, we absolutely pulverized the Eldrazi deck. And then we got completely crushed by the Blue Black Psychic Frog decks, which I think is going to happen about 80% of the time you play in those matchups. Uh, well, I mean, maybe not 80%. You know, like, if you're on the play and you have a turn one protected thing, so you have like your unmask them and then you get to do your combo, then you're probably fine. But that's kind of the level you need to be. So you need to have like the upper like 20% of hands with this deck, I think. And be on the play to reliably beat those decks. So let's talk about the list. Uh, yeah, it kind of performed more or less as I thought it would. Like it does its thing quite reliably. The thing it does is quite powerful. It has a horrible matchup in the meta that we got crushed by twice. I am still perplexed how you win a challenge with this in the world of Blue Black Rescalinator. 
because at some point you're not going to win the die roll and that's going to be potentially lights out just on that front nevertheless though uh you know reanimator is a deck that a lot of people enjoy and this is what a lot of people call proper reanimator doing it old school style just making your big guys not messing around with any of these cantrips and counter magic just being a baller and smashing down your giant creatures the shallow grave winning us that game against doomsday was really cool uh, that was a, a nice thing that we had in our deck to draw to. The only other thing we had as an option was to try and put as many Arcan Cruelties into play as we could and hope that their triggers were enough. But the fact that we could just go, okay, we can do something, we can Shadow Grave it and then just win off of the creature attacking was a really nice out to have. And I can certainly see the attraction for Shallow Grave, especially when you're playing Grizzlebrand because you just draw 21 cards and win the game pretty much. And it does get around some pieces of hate, like I mentioned at the top of the video. It did feel like the weak link that we were boarding out quite often, although we did try boarding out the animate devs for that matchup where we needed to just smash our opponent down in Doomsday Town. Sideboard-wise, the show and tells, I think you pretty much always want these as part of your package. I think that is just a really nice thing to be able to swap to. It's either that or you have a lot more like black creatures, but you need to have a transformative plan, even if it's only a mild transformation. I would also say that I do not like the Scrubland in the deck. I think this would be better as a basic Swamp or another Underground Sea or even a an Undersea Sewers could be an option or a, a Raucous Theatre. But I just don't like, don't like the Scrubland because you're... Yeah, sure, maybe we can cast as a Traxxer, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be getting, it, getting the work done. That's not as if we're running um, Serenity, which is a common card you see in sideboards of uh, reanimated decks where you play the serenity and you just get to blow up all of the ley lines all of the cages just everything's gone if we're running that we could probably have a scrubland perhaps the scrubland is in there because they were there was a list where they were running serenity before and they swapped stuff off but they like to keep the mana base and it sometimes does cast the attractor as well i guess but i'm not convinced by this this card here especially since we are a magus deck so having another swamp might actually be slightly handy yeah, this deck does exactly what it says on the tin. How is this going to look in two weeks' time when we get the bannings coming out? Like, it's probably going to lose grief, but other than that, it's going to be much of the same. So you have to go back to the, sort of the older pre-grief builds where you're running some other utility pieces there or just more of our combo pieces so we can sort of reliably go off more times rather than checking the coast is clear type thing. But it will definitely be a blow for this deck to if it loses grief reanimate grief which it should do that that's not really a thing that we should be playing in legacy anymore but yeah uh i hope you enjoyed this one congratulations to magic dads 71522 for putting away a challenge with this honestly in this meta game that is a very impressive feat and i don't know how they managed it so congrats on that one please remember to uh, like and subscribe it does help the channel out quite a lot and doesn't cost you anything and if you have money that you want to spend and help me out then by all means check out my patreon in the description below even if you just want to give a little bit to say thanks or if you want to get some of the content I put out on my Patreon, have a look at that and help us out. All right, thank you so much for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel, a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles, and lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above, as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.